Hey guys, I am really excited to get started into a new unit. This is unit four, and we're going to be talking about all things energy in this unit. This is one of my favorites. This is by far my most favorite physics unit, um, and it's the last unit before we jump into chemistry. So our first lesson is going to cover some different forms of energy. Some of these you've heard of before, and some of these might be new to you, um, but we're just going to do a general overview of the different forms of energies that we're going to see and discuss more in depth throughout the unit. Um, so if you'll remember in our last unit, we talked about work and power and machines. And now we're going to talk about the relationship between the new topic, which is energy, and the old topic, which is work. Um, and then we're going to look at some different types of energies. And then we're going to start to talk about how these different energies can change forms. So if you're with me um, in class or you're watching this video as a student of mine, um, then you have this word splash and I want you to pause the video now and um, work on this and then come back to the video. If not, you can just follow along with me. All right, so before we get started, a couple things you need to know. First of all, the world is full of energy. You can look around you, beside you, think about things, and everything that you see or do requires or is a product of energy. So basically, without energy, living things can't survive. And you're going to become familiar with the different forms of energies. You're going to see how this is possible. Um, as we move through. But for now, just know that energy is all around us. It is a major part of who we are, why we are here, and the things that we do um, in this world. So I've got a couple of pictures I want you to just um, take a look at, and I want you to pause the video and write down in your notes how these pictures relate to what you already know about energy. So if you struggle to think of how these different pictures related to energy, um, no worries because I think at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to come back and just name off different types of energies um, that you see present in these pictures. So I'm not going to give you any answers just yet. Um, just make sure that you have some things jotted down. And then after the lesson, I want you to come back and see if you can add to any of the things that you already have. All right, so um, let's go back to unit three, just a minute, where we talked about work. And I want you to remember that work um, requires a force and a distance. So work requires um, an, a force to be applied to an object and that object move or cover a certain distance. And our new definition for energy is the ability to do work. So we're starting to merge those two things together. Um, and also, energy could be the ability to cause a change. Sometimes um, you'll see that definition. So basically, whenever work's done, energy is transformed or transferred. And we're going to talk about this more in depth when we get to the next lesson, lesson two uh, in our energy unit. So if you look at my example here, it says whenever you stretch a slingshot back, you do work and you transfer energy from your body to the elastic band. So we're starting to see how in order for work to be done, energy has to be behind that. So we have a unit for energy. Energy is measured in joules. And because energy is a measure of the ability to do work, energy and work have the same unit. So you might be thinking, oh, well, work had... Um, when we solve for work problems, uh, the unit was joules, and that's right, because energy is a measure of the ability to do work, so they're going to have the same unit. 
So work requires an object to change its motion. However, energy can be present in an object even if that object's not moving or even if nothing seems to be happening because we have um, different forms of energy. So you may have heard of potential energy and that would be an example of potential energy. So something like a book lying on your desk, it might appear to have no energy present, but it does. We just call it potential energy. All right, so take a look at the different forms of energies that we're going to be talking about in this unit. Today, we're going to do a brief overview of all of the different forms. Um, then we're going to jump into energy transformations, and then we're going to jump into each of the different forms of energy. Um, and it's going to take us about eight or nine weeks to cover all of these different forms. So um, we have mechanical energy, which might be new to you, but... Um, Mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic and potential energy, which you've probably heard of before. Um, then we have heat energy. Sometimes this is known as thermal energy. Chemical energy, which we're going to um, talk about today, but then we won't elaborate on this until we get into chemistry, which is our next unit. Um, electromagnetic energy, we're going to talk all about this. Um, nuclear energy, which is also a chemistry concept. So we're going to touch on it a little bit in this lesson, and then we're going to come back and do a deep dive when we get to chemistry. Light energy, um, which is also known as radiant energy. Then we have sound energy and electrical energy, which is also known as electricity, and then magnetism. All right, so let's talk about mechanical energy because um, this one might be new to you. Although the, the, um, when we start talking about what exactly it is, you might remember from elementary school talking about kinetic and potential energy. So mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic and potential energy in an object. And it is, we could say that it has, or it is energy in an object that um, can be steel or can be moving, or can be both. So let's look at this picture. Um, we have it in different stages, one, two, and three. So in the first part of this illustration, we would say this is an example of potential energy because it's just, nothing's really happening. It's just stored energy. And then we can see that potential energy is converted into kinetic energy when he pulls the hammer back um, and he swings down on the nail. And then, in number three, there's a few things happening here. We could say this is um, this kinetic energy is converted into sound energy because obviously it's going to make a sound. And then there's some different energies um, that are happening as well. So you can see here how energy can tr um, change or transform. So kinetic energy, just a reminder, this is the energy that a moving object possesses. So if I am physically hammering in a nail and I'm moving, then I have kinetic energy. Potential energy is what we call stored energy, and this is stored due to position. So this could be a battery that's not in use. Or this could be um, when you pull back on an elastic band and you just hold it. Or like in the example on the screen, this could be dynamite before it explodes because we know when it explodes, there's some radiant energy, some thermal energy, some sound energy, some chemical energy. Um, but right before it explodes, it has what we call potential or stored energy. Um, and you can see how potential energy and kinetic energy work together. It, it changes form. So you can see with this demolition ball, you have potential energy is converted into kinetic energy and then is converted to a lot of different energies when the building actually comes down. Um, there are two types of potential energy that I just want to touch base on really quick so you know what it is. Um, gravitational potential energy is energy that is stored in objects that are above Earth's surface. So I always think about in my classroom, I have a huge TV that just hangs on the wall. It's not plugged in. We don't watch it anymore. Um, so no electrical energy going to it, no sound energy coming from it. Um, so it has what we call stored energy because it has the potential to do something, make a sound or show a picture, but because it's unplugged, it really doesn't do anything. And it hangs above our surface. So specifically, we would say that that TV has gravitational potential energy. 
Um, elastic potential energy is energy that's stored by an object that can stretch or shrink. So you can see with the slingshot here, when the little guy pulls back that rock or pulls back the slingshot and just holds it, um, we have elastic potential energy present there. So we're also going to talk about in this unit heat energy or thermal energy, and you'll hear me refer to it both ways. This is an energy that results from the motion of molecules, and we're going to talk a lot about the motion of molecules when we get into our chemistry unit. Um, but anything that produces heat is said to have heat energy. So always ask yourself if you're given a situation and you're asked to identify um, different forms of energy, ask yourself, does this produce heat. And if you say yes, then it probably has heat energy or thermal energy. Um, so I've given you some examples here. Heater, um, when you rub your hands together, that friction tends to produce heat. Um, we learned that in our force and motion unit. So that would be an example of heat energy. Chemical energy is the energy required to bind atoms together. And when you break these bonds, energy is released. So there's a lot of different examples. If you've taken biology or a life science class, you may have talked about photosynthesis, which is an example of um, chemical energy where sunlight is converted to um, nutrients for a plant. Digestion would also be an example of chemical energy. When a car burns gasoline, that is an example of chemical energy. So think chemical reaction. Um, this is as far as we're going with this type of energy because we've got a whole unit, actually three units over chemical energy that we're going to get to in our chemistry portion of the course. So um, just hang tight there. I'll just leave this. Just know a definition and maybe an example or two. Electromagnetic energy, this one might be a new concept for you, um, but basically this is energy that comes from space in the form of waves. So if you've ever heard of the electromagnetic spectrum, this is what we're talking about. Um, so an example would be the sun's rays producing light. Um, and then X-rays, UV rays, if you've ever heard of those things, those are all examples of electromagnetic energy via the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, asphalt on a hot summer day is hotter where the light shines because the sunlight would be an example of radiated electromagnetic energy. Nuclear energy, this is another one that we're going to talk about more in depth when we get to chemistry. Um, but for now, you need to know that nuclear energy is derived from forces that hold atoms together. We call this fusion. Um, and this is where the sun gets its energy from. But I'll remind you of that again when we get to our um, nuclear energy unit. When these nuclear bonds break, this is called fission. Um, fission is division. Nuclear energy can be released in abundance, which is actually how we get our electricity. Um, this is also, or an example of this is also with the atomic bomb. So fusion and fission are just examples of nuclear energy, and this has to do with what goes on in the nucleus of an atom, which is why we talk about this when we get to chemistry, because when we get to chemistry, we'll talk all things atoms. Electrical energy is just basically when electrons move. Um, and so examples would be like outlets, TVs, when you flip on your lights. Lightning is an example of electrical energy through a process called induction. Um, again, we'll get to that in this unit. Sound energy is produced by anything that makes a sound. Um, so lots of examples of that. Light energy is also sometimes referred to as radiant energy, and it comes from anything that produces a light. Magnetism is the attraction or repulsion of an object due to what we call a magnetic field. Um, and so you have different kinds of magnets or magnetism. We have what's called an electromagnet, which is where we can um, generate electricity from a magnet. Um, you can have just basic permamagnets or bar magnets, um, and you are probably familiar with magnets and the law of attraction, but we're going to do a deep dive into magnetism and tie into electricity. 
All right, so that ends this lesson. Um, I will see you again in the next lesson, which is going to be how different forms of energy can transform.